Has this ever happened to you? Oh my god, gamer friend with a cute female avatar, and therefore is 100% female. I love you. Oh, I'm a 30-year-old man. <laughs> well, that makes two of you. Nishimura is a gamer who's become wary of female avatars because of his failed proposal to Nekohime. And tale as old as time, Nekohime is a man IRL. After focusing on solo games for so long, he joined a guild where he met a cute character named Akko. Akko was very smitten with Rushian, Nishimura's avatar, probably a little too smitten. So he accepted her engagement proposal. He didn't take her seriously and he did away with the possibility that she's a man in real life. As long as she's cute online, he sees no problem with it. One day, their guild decided to have an offline meeting. Nishimura later discovered that his three teammates were also his schoolmates. And guess what? They're all girls. Nishimura's tsundere classmate Akane is the armored knight Shwain. The student body president, Kyo, is the premium player, master, or apricot. Lastly, Akko, their cute RPG healer, is a quiet girl and a total loner who's also named Akko IRL. However, there is a problem. Akko doesn't know how to separate the game from reality, so she calls everyone by their game name and she's a little too attached to her beloved Rushian. As a solution, Kyo established the Net Game Club, where they can play together after school. According to her, the characters in the game and the people in the club exist simultaneously. With this, they can show Akko how different they all are in real life from their game avatars. But then again comes another dilemma. When Rushian logs into the game, he sees Nekohime. Ooh, here comes the drama. Nekohime gleefully greets him and expresses her happiness, knowing that Rushian still plays the game. Rushian can't help but blush at how cute she is. The boy tells Nekohime that their previous encounter taught him a lesson to separate the game from reality, which makes her happy. As for Nekohime, she's been busy with work, but someone in real life reminded her of the game so she logged in again. Come next day, Nishimura's with Akko again, and he feels pretty damn awkward. She's been staring at him like a puppy waiting for a treat, and she says that she wants to pay her morning respects to her… master. Again, Nishimura reminds her that this is reality. Besides, calling him master makes her sound like his maid rather than a wife. Well then, Akko hopes he doesn't mind if he calls him <clears throat> honey bunch. However, Akko's efforts are futile as Nishimura tries to ignore her. Luckily, Miss Yui, Nishimura's teacher, enters the room. This is Akko's signal to leave. But before starting class, Yui wants a word with Nishimura. She asks him if he and Akko are dating, which Nishimura denies. However, Yui advises him to be nice to Akko since she doesn't have many friends and misses classes. Suddenly, Kyo arrives to ask Yui about her request. The teacher declines her offer and says she already has the literary club. If that's the case, the least she can do is provide their club with a name. Later that day, the Net Game Club meets in their office to play. They're gearing up to Bloomkey Mega Volcano. Before going, Nishimura checks on Akko's equipment and discovers that her robe isn't appropriate for their mission. Akane chimes in and wonders what the pink star glitter wand does. Well, it sparkles and shoots out stars when it hits an enemy. That's it. Because of that, they forced Akko to disregard looking charming in the game and wear her flame robe. A lava monster instantly welcomes them at the mecha volcano. Kyo uses her Omaibo staff, but Akane stops her IRL. They agree not to use premium items, but everything Apricot owns is elite. So, Shuane takes charge by slashing her sword at the creature. Master tries to get with her perfect blizzard spell, but ice won't work on hot burning magma. Um, duh. Even Akko can't heal her because her settings change. Luckily, Nishimura is by her side to help. Ultimately, they're exhausted but manage to increase their efficiency. That was good work, Rushian. Akko suddenly whispers to Nishimura's ear. This makes him stand up and he can't hide how flustered he is. They walk home together and stop by a nearby convenience store. Akko feels they're still in LA and believes they look like a married couple. However, Nishimura disagrees and utters, At best, I look like your poof. He trails off and says it's already late. Akko shares her parents aren't always home. If they are, she can't play games all night. Hearing that reminds Nishimura of Miss Yui's words earlier. 
The following day, after their game, Aka clings to Nishimura. Noticing their closeness, Akane states the club's purpose becomes pointless since Aka's boundary between play and reality grows thinner. Heck, it's non-existent. Aside from that, Kyo reveals their club might close soon since they don't have an advisor. As much as possible, she wants to achieve their goal before that happens. In the game, Rushian asks for Nekohima's advice. Understanding his situation, she tells him to have faith in himself. The following day, Nishimura reminds Akko that he's not Rushian IRL. They should consider each other regular friends outside the game, not a married couple. Hearing that, Aqua stares at him and speculates who's the woman he's spoken to that gave him the advice. Nishimura gets startled and tries to deny it, but she states that a woman knows when her husband is unfaithful. With a smile, Akko asks for the girl's name so she can thank her for helping him. It's a trap. Retreat. My dude, it's a trap. The next time Rushian logs into the game, he tells Nekohime what happened. Nekohime giggles at his failure and bids him goodbye. Unfortunately, Akko catches them. Yep, she stalked Rushian. Ugh, is this the start of a yandere route? She asks Rushian if he likes that girl, but he explains that she's just an acquaintance. However, he reveals that she is the one he professed his love to before and was rejected. Akko gets jealous and wants to harm Nekohime for breaking Rushian's heart. Rushian stops her, so she leaves and says she has some business to handle. Oh, no. The following day, the club learns that Akko missed school. However, they see her in the game and chat with her there. Akko tells them that she has an offline meeting with someone. Rushian assumes it's a girl, but no, it's a guy. The others think it's dangerous for her to meet a stranger. Besides, she has Rushian as a husband. Akko doesn't deny that, but it's only in the game, right? She utters, Rushian, what's the difference between reality and the game? Ooh, she's pissed. Akko excuses herself, and Rushian lets her. The others protest IRL, but Nishimura states that the club has accomplished its purpose. Akko finally knows the difference between game and reality. He can't hide his frustration though, angrily drinking the soda from the vending machine. Akane and Kyo arrive, telling him to chase after Akko because she's heading to Maigasaki Station. He has to hurry since she's his wife. But Nishimura tells them that's just in the game. Just like Akko stated, Akane knows he likes Akko, so isn't that enough reason to save her? Kyo chimes in that Nishimura is the opposite of Akko. He keeps the game and reality too separate. However, she knows Rushian lives inside of him, and he cares for Akko. Well, the truth is, Nishimura feels more than that. He starts liking the non-game Akko and doesn't want her to get hurt. Well, what's he still doing there? Get going before it's too late, dummy! He runs towards the station until he sees Akko. He calls her name and tells her that, as her husband, he won't permit her to have an online meeting with strangers. She's still his wife in-game. Akko is flustered by this. Rushian is Nishimura-kun? Miss Yui boards out suddenly. Wait, she's here too? This is Nekohime-san! Akko quickly chimes. Hold up, what? What? Isn't she supposed to be a man? Miss Yui tries to deny it, but she can't fool Akko. She finally admits to talking to Akko in LA yesterday. Meanwhile, Nishimura still processes the fact that he proposed to his teacher. Ouch. Seeing Nishimura in turmoil, Akko wants to avenge him and aims to hit Yui with her staff. Nishimura tries to protect their teacher, but Yui can save herself as she hits Akko's throat with her arms. The next day, Miss Yui is there as their advisor due to Kyo's threat, I mean, invitation. She promises to work hard as long as all members go to school. Yep, she's talking about you, Akko. One day, Nishimura tells Akko about the first guild he encountered when he was healing from Nekohima's rejection. The leader interviewed him and told him their members were devoted to the game. Rushian joked about dropping out of school, and the leader confirmed their guildmates did that while some quit their job. The head added that their guild mostly consists of members with maxed out levels. Hearing that, Rushian felt embarrassed and left. However, the leader assured him he could stop by whenever he's in trouble. Akko feels it's nice to be in that guild and not do anything except play. If only she could quit school while Nishimura supports her. Suddenly, she realizes she left her wallet at home and thinks of selling her unwanted items to buy soda. Nishimura says she can't do that since she's IRL, so Akko panics more. Oh dear, she's getting worse. 
Nishimura tells this to Yui. That's why in their club meeting, she expresses her frustration. The others try to relate to Akko's situation, saying they also feel they're still in the game sometimes. Yui isn't happy that they seem to forget the club's objective. She can just dissolve the organization and have them quit playing. I think that would be meowtrigious, Kyo says teasingly, making Yui blush and excuse herself. After their teacher leaves, Kyo is excited to inform them that there are new mystery boxes in the game. Akko wants to try buying even though she doesn't have money. Because of her enthusiasm, Kyo promises to buy from her account. After a few clicks, she purchases the item and starts a club tradition. Despite the multiple chances of winning from their 100 mystery boxes, Akko didn't win any rare item. She's upset that her bad luck in the game compares to her life, and she wants to quit existing. Nishimura invites her to ice cream to cheer her up, making her blush. Oh, that's so sweet. The following day, Nishimura's friends make fun of him. Coincidentally, Akane and her friend Nanako pass by, but the former ignores his greeting. Nanako apologizes for her friend's rudeness, making the boys speculate he must be two-timing. They wish to tell Akko about this, but there's no need for that. She's already lurking, as always. Later that day, Akko enters the club room with a low HP. Nishimura wonders what happened to her, so she tells them that the girls from her class are teasing her about having a boyfriend. But that's not the problem. She actually wants everyone to know she and Nishimura are a couple. The thing is, people start talking to her when she's already established herself as a loner. Suddenly, Nanako peeks from the club's door, startling Akane. She has followed her here and wonders what she's doing. Just by observing, Nanako quickly figures out it's a game club, but Akane tries to deny her membership. She tells her friend that she's keeping guard to avoid this place from tainting normal people like her. Hastily, Akane pushes Nanako away. Akane's regular high school life is over! Shwain and Apricot don't show up in LA, so Rushian and Akko go on a little adventure. They ride an airship cruise, jump into the ocean, navigate the undersea temple, and come out of a whale's blowhole. Akko feels like it's a honeymoon, but Rushian thinks it's better to call it a date. So, is it a date? Rushian panics at that, but Akko is just overjoyed and reminisces about their first meeting. She was attacked by monsters when he came in like a handsome prince. However, Rushian remembers differently. He met her on a secluded road and she asked him how to quit the game. Of course, he taught her what to do, but she has turned into his stalker ever since. Akko explains it was all because of love, yet Rushian feels her affection smothers him. While walking, they see an inn and step inside it to see what it's like. They notice two players facing each other while sitting on a bed. Because of that, Akko has a bright idea. Since they're married in this game, perhaps they can do what real couples do and be passionate with their chats until they melt at the sweet sensation Rushian immediately stops her delusions because he might start imagining it and we might get banned from YouTube. Yeah, so let's not go there, right? Meanwhile, they accidentally meet Nekohime in a graveyard. However, a group of men starts protecting her. They're Nekohime's former guild colleagues who seem like they'd do anything for her. In short, they're simps. The couple leaves Nekohime with their guild reunion and walks on a trail. Rushian appreciates the men treating Nekohime like a princess, while Akko insinuates she doesn't need to be a princess. Being his wife is enough for her. Nobody asks, Akko. Suddenly, a girl appears out of nowhere with mini monsters all over her body. Rushian saves her, and she gratefully thanks him. However, her chats are misspelled and slow. After observing her, Rushian deduces she's a newbie. Her name is Set. Rush... Rushian... Set stutters. A jealous Akko immediately asks for an explanation of this girl's identity, and Rushian quickly explains he's not cheating. Set butts in and asks what she's supposed to do. Not wanting to leave a newbie behind, Rushian teaches her the basic controls, making his wife jealous. The next day, Akane is in a good mood because Nanako promises not to tell anyone about her secret. Now they're ready for battle. But wait, Set comes running towards Rushian and clings to him. Now Shwain and Apricot are confused. Who's this girl? Who is this girl? Rushian immediately explains she's a newbie, so Shwain volunteers to help her. Set giggles at Shwain's name and clarifies that she prefers Rushian because he's nice. Oh, girl, you better pray the jealous wife won't k-word you. On another day in the club, 
Ako asks them to play another game. Everyone's up for it, so Kyo chooses Ultra Force, an FPS. She advises thinking of your enemies as normies to be able to win. They play a team deathmatch and seem to struggle to beat their enemies. However, Ako is a brilliant sharpshooter, but she gets too caught up in the game. Distinguishing the game from reality appears tougher for Akko now. She is role-playing Ultra Force even in the school the following day. Yuh, that's pretty scary considering what the game is about. Suddenly, Nanako arrives and asks Nishimura if they had their meeting yesterday because they weren't in their usual meeting place. Upon hearing that, he quickly realizes she's set. She explains that they seem to have fun playing, so she tried it, not noticing Akane's about to have a nervous breakdown because of this information. Making matters worse, she immediately assumes that Nishimura and Akko are not a couple IRL. She theorizes that they aren't that close as she clings to him. This makes Akko incredibly upset, and she walks out on them. Aww. They inform Miss Saito of the incident, but they all don't know what to do. Nanako clarifies she has no intentions of taking Nishimura away from Akko, but she also didn't expect it would end up like this. Akko won't answer their calls, so Nishimura volunteers to talk to her in the game. In the LA world, Rushian encounters Akko in a dark forest. She greets him and asks for his help to level up. She's forsaking the life where they're not a couple to max out her levels and get reincarnated. That way, Akko can have a more cheerful character. However, Rushian doesn't understand what she means by she'll forsake her life. Simply put, Akko will quit school and live in LA, where he's her husband. He tries to stop her, but it's already too late. Nishibura's frustrated because they can no longer contact Akko since she switched off her chats. Kyo thinks their club backfired on them, but Miss Saito believes otherwise. She thinks Akko is improving and trusts Nishimura to know what to do, since he understands what it means for his game wife. Walking home, Akane mentions that Akko knows how dim-witted she is. Because of her slow pace, the people she met in LA left her, except for Nishimura, who stayed and accepted her for who she was. Akko stated that she wanted to be with him forever, and she was so happy that Akane thought her brain melted. But Akane feels the same. She likes to hang out with him forever too. Nishimura stares at her in disbelief, until Akane realizes she's out of character. When she meant hang out, she meant playing games, nothing else. Besides, she's stuck with him, the shut-in girl and the paid items maniac. So she really hopes Nishimura will bring Akko back to them. The next day, Nishimura goes to Akko's house, where her mom instantly recognizes he's her daughter's husband just by his name. Mrs. Tamaki asks what he needs. So Nishimura says he skipped school to visit Akko. Hearing that endears him to her, so she gives him Akko's room keys. She also bestows him to care for her child because she's off to work. Nishimura knocks on Akko's door, startling her. He informs her how Mrs. Tamaki gave him the keys to her room and entrusted her future to him. Panicked, Akko screams at him not to enter, but he's persistent. But the moment he opens the door, he sees her barely wearing anything. <laughs> Oops. Awkward. Nishimura shuts the door and waits until Akko is ready. Soon enough, she tells him to come in. He sees her kneeling on the floor, starkers. Be gentle, please. She says, girl, get some clothes on. <sighs> Finally dressed, Akko lets Nishimura inside her room and offers him tea. She tells him she locks herself in this room for a week, so he wonders how she uses the bathroom. Akko intently stares at Nishimura while he drinks the tea and says she puts her bodily liquids into a bottle. Nishimura almost pukes as he sees the bottle of tea, but Akko quickly utters she's joking. You better hope she is. Addressing the elephant in the room, Akko asks if Nishimura is here to ask her to come to school. He thinks she's silly for thinking that and says he is here to hang out. And so, Nishimura teaches Akko what she needs to know to level up. She finds it difficult, but he swears to tutor her until she succeeds at her goal. They spend the whole day playing until Shu and Master log in. At this point, Akko's eyes are already tired. Nishimura connects his cable so he can also attend their guild's conference. In the meeting, Shwain, Apricot, and Nekohime reprimand them for cutting classes. That's when Rushian drops the bomb. He'll quit school. What? Akko IRL protests, but Nishimura asks why it's fine for her, but not him. 
She reasons he'll never see his game friends again. Yeah, but is she okay with that happening to her? Nishimura knows making friends and studying is hard for her. That's why she wants to quit school, and Nanako's involvement worsened that. Since they both had fun earlier, he asked if they should drop out and enjoy their online lives. However, Nishimura can't deny that the guild made him realize how fun it is to exist IRL. He knows life is tough, but they can always escape reality by playing together. For the sake of his wife, he'll do anything. Touched by his words, Akko finally smiles and confirms she'll return to school. With that, they can enjoy more journeys with their friends and live a different life the way they want, away from the harsh reality, if only for a while. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.